Hello, Fried fans, and welcome to Season 3 of Fried, the Burnout Podcast. I'm your host, Kate Donovan, and my mission with Fried is to hashtag end burnout culture. On this pod, we end burnout culture by sharing stories of people who have been through it all and lived to tell the tale, sharing expert tips from the best of the best in the burnout and stress management fields, and sharing hashtag straight from Kate episodes full of my own expertise plus actionable steps to help you end your own burnout cycle starting today. If you're feeling burnt out right now and need more personalized guidance, I'm here for you. In every episode, you'll find a link to book a free breakthrough burnout call. You can find it easily by heading to bit.ly forward slash call Kate or finding the link in the show notes. This free call helps us decide if one-on-one coaching is perfect for you. If it is, we'll get started. If it isn't, I might suggest one of my immediately available online courses, my book, The Bounce Back Ability Factor, or some sessions with a colleague who's better suited to exactly what you need right now. Also, if you happen to be in New York City, I'd love to see you as a patient. I'm a licensed acupuncturist with over 13 years of international experience, and right now my office is located in Midtown Manhattan. I focus on, you guessed it, burnout. I help your body build up a natural stress resilience to fight off all those pesky symptoms that come alongside burnout. You can find all the deets on that at katedonovanacupuncture.com. Hello, fried fans. I have an extra special treat for you today because we have an announcement happening on the show today, a very exciting thing happening that I have been dying to talk to you about, but I've had to keep hush, hush, hush until now. So I'm I'm really, really, really excited to be here with now a, a new friend. Her name is Christina Valletta, and she is the co-founder and chief growth officer at MindAlt, a mood-enhancing deodorant leveraging the science of essential oils. I've been using it, and it's amazing, just as a, as a side note. Prior to MindAlt, she ran Break the Future, a consultancy that positions underrepresented founders and startups for growth. Clients included Left Tackle Capital and several female-funded companies that she continues to advise. Christina also relaunched the Women's Channel at Forbes as a business-first platform for entrepreneurial and millennial-minded women on the rise, achieving 35% year-over-year growth for the channel. With a background in advertising and innovation across global agencies such as Saatchi and Saatchi and Can- Kantar? Kantar? Kantar. Kantar, to creative boutiques and startups. Along the way, she started 4020 Vision, a resource to share advice from 40-something women to 20-something women, 7x7 mentoring salons, a live mentoring forum to give rising entrepreneurs an advisory panel, and 40 Women to Watch Over 40, a community for women disrupting and innovating after age 40. I mean, I feel like I knew I was lucky to know you already. Oh, that's but nice. after that bio, I'm like, woo, it is good to have somebody like that in my corner. I'm so grateful that you're here. Thank you for making the time. So excited to be here. Couldn't be a better conversation to have here at 445 at night. <laughs> <laughs> the end of the day. Perfect yes, timing. It's, it's perfect timing. And I am I'm just so excited about this. And I have been so excited about this since we spoke about it the first time a few months ago. Um, but before we get into the big secret, which you're going to have to wait for because I'm nasty like that, I want to hear a little bit about you and burnout, burnout in your life. I mean, you've obviously accomplished an incredible amount in your lifetime. So how do you relate to burnout in your life? Have you felt it? Have you dealt it? What's going on? Right. Um, well, I definitely am somebody who always does a lot and I'm go, 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 go. And definitely kind of feel like, I don't know whether it's my Midwestern upbringing. I'm always like, I've, I've got like a hearty health, health and wellness. Uh, I'm lucky in that. And I've always also been very energized by what I do. So the late nights or the, you know, doing multiple things haven't really affected me. I've had friends that have been like, how, how do you do like you're doing that job and you're doing 40 over 40 and you're doing this. And I'm like, well, you know what? I really enjoy doing it all. And particularly when there was a period of time when I was doing business on my own. You're also, you get to cut out some of the BS or the politics and just focus on the things you love, except for, of course, paying taxes and doing <laughs> accounting and all that stuff. But I will say that sometimes your body tells you that even though you think that you are doing it all and doing doing great at it, uh, that your body tells you that you're not so much. 
Um, and I think we've all experienced that sort of time of year when you go home at the end of the holidays or you have a holiday and all of a sudden, like your body just breaks down and says, oh, you know, I've been running on adrenaline for a long time here. So I think it was one Christmas when I was running my own business, I was doing, uh, you know, different side hobbies and side passions and a lot of deadlines and just go, go, go. And when I got home, I just, you know, of course I got so sick. And also I had been having this ongoing recurring back problem that sort of was building, um, which interestingly enough, went away after the holiday, but um, <laughs> it's funny how that happens. That's but while strange. I was home, <laughs> yes. But while I was home, I just kind of noticed how my parents still sit down at the table every day and had their breakfast and looked out the window at this beautiful setting and read the paper. And I was like, man, you know, I, you know, I rush to work and I take whatever I take and I eat it at my desk. And I do often look at those coffee shops and wonder who those people are sitting there. <laughs> but I decided that I needed to make a ritual of eating breakfast again before the day started and really to do it without interruption. So, and I also love breakfast, so that helped. So I would sit at home, read the paper, go, actually, I would leave my apartment every day to go get a cup of coffee, which when my parents visited, they're like, why don't you have a coffee machine? But <laughs> um, I would go outside, get the coffee, get the paper, come home, eat my breakfast at the desk. And I would just not let any work come into my life until after I'd done that. And it kind of became this very grounding ritual. And it just made me kind of, you know, realize the importance of taking those little moments, like what it's just something I do for myself that really feels good. It almost makes me feel like I'm taking a holiday every day. Every now and then I also go to the diner and do it, which really makes me feel like I'm paying hooky. Um, but at any rate, it just gives me that moment of sort of getting centered, doing something for myself that I really enjoy before rushing into the day. I mean, of course, there's sometimes when it doesn't work, but I'd say it's something that I just kind of put a, a line in the sand about. To the degree where when people ask me for breakfast meetings, I'm like, I'll meet you for coffee, but I'll have already had my breakfast. But <laughs> anyway, I guess that was sort of the, you know, that sort of awakening to like my body needs some breaks. My mind needs some space. And how do I build that into my everyday? And so Christina is dropping hints about what we're going to talk about, but we're still not telling you. So, <laughs> so I love that you created a ritual that cr- created some sort of focus spot for your day in Chinese medicine. One of the things that is used to quote unquote, calm the heart when there is anxiety or overthinking or a variety of different disorders is ritual. So ritual is created to calm the heart in Chinese medicine. This is, so this is something that for thousands and thousands of years, the Chinese medicine community has been saying, you know, you do need small rituals. Now I, don't even think of breakfast as a ritual because it's so uh, standard for me. Like I, I am not a good person without breakfast, (laughs) (laughs) but I do not do work before I eat breakfast. And I never really thought about it as a ritual before. And I don't build other rituals on purpose. Like I don't have a light an incense before you do this or light a candle before you do that for most things, because I, I, I feel trapped often when I like make rules, but there are rules that I follow that are ritualistic that I just don't really pay attention to. Mm -hmm. So I like that you created that on purpose for yourself. And it's such a, a normal thing. It's, it's not an extraordinary idea. You're not sitting and meditating for a half an hour and then going to write a gratitude journal and then going to, you're just having breakfast and not working. Yeah. No, it's kind of interesting because it's like a bit of an irony that, well, gee, doing something that most you need to, you're breaking fast. You're, you're starting your day. It's uh, that shouldn't be a luxury, but in our crazy times where we're all so go, go, go. And you used to wake up in the morning kind of being like, what are the possibilities of the day? Or that's the symbolism of the, the day, the morning. Uh, but it's gotten so like rush, 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 you know, eat on the go or whatever. So it's it's about being intentional about it, I think, that makes it original. It's, it's yeah. like, well, what do I really enjoy? What do I like doing about it? Like, and indulging in those parts of it. Favorite breakfast? Blueberries and avocado toast. Love. <laughs> so... Let's talk about mind alt for a second, because I love mind alt. I 
knew I liked the idea when I talked to you, you know, when I, when I, when you told me about the first time I knew I liked the idea and then I went to your website and I was like, hashtag obsessed buying two immediately. (laughs) Thank you. I have, you're very welcome. I'm, I'm very happy to support. And I immediately did started doing the routine. Can you tell people what the, the tagline? The smell swipe smile. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> smell, swipe, smile. So this is the idea, right? You have this deodorant that was designed by a microbiologist. Yes. So I co-founded it with my ex-husband, uh, which is unique and required its mood enhancing in its own space. But um, he actually started working on it 15 years ago with a um, microbial scientist who was interested in creating a natural deodorant that didn't have aluminum in it. So it started with yeah. this no aluminum and it, and it became mind alt over 15 years. Yes. So it was interesting because 15 years ago, uh, you know, there was a growing community of concern around aluminum, but it, we don't, did, you know, we didn't have a clean deodorant or natural deodorant category yet. And people were beginning to think about what they put into their bodies as being very much um, having an impact on how they feel and the whole idea of toxins and clean. But it really wasn't mainstream. Um, so he actually worked, uh, this scientist was working on using oil. Uh, he was using an oil, but it was a carrier oil to encapsulate sweat and also because it has um, antibacterial qualities. And where my ex came in was that he had been doing work with aromatherapy and he understood that there was these different benefits to different essential oils. So he challenged the scientist who came to him with this prototype and said, well, what if we actually made the deodorants with formulations that could have an impact on your mood, because I keep noticing this during the day, I keep getting these whiffs of the scent. And as it turns out, like that's the essential oil, like, or the carrier oil kind of releasing throughout the day. So if you could actually have the carrier oil hold these essential oils, you could release the mood enhancing benefits during the day. They did a lot of prototyping, they did testing uh, that sort of mimicked the clinical testing. And uh, unfortunately, that the scientist that he was working with uh, ended up passing away. Jeff, this was all back in New Zealand. Yes, sorry, a little prayer to him. <laughs> and, uh, um, Jeff moved to America, you know, started an innovation company, fast forward, you know, through all sorts of ups and downs, you know, a lot, a lot of ups, you know, fast company, you know, 100, you know, creative people of the year to then leaving the innovation company he started going through cancer and was like, oh my God, I'm starting over. I need a clean start. I want to start making products that are actually good for me, good for the world. And not just about making a lot of profit for somebody else's company (laughs) in a way. So that's when I kind of came back on board um, seeing, I just thought there was some, you know, something quite magical about the concept once I started thinking about the times and and actually once I used the product myself and was like, wow, this really works. Like, like I was in the middle of Pilates, like, huh, what's that smell? I'm like, oh my God, it's my deodorant. Where I really came on was thinking about like, well, how do we make this more than just a product? How does it become more of, um, you know, a brand that is offering, you know, you know, what's our why, you know, what's our real thing beyond selling a product and this whole idea of being in a better mood and that it's become something that people associate this whole like mindfulness is something people associate with, like you said earlier, like, Oh my God, I, you know, I have to like sit by myself and and not think about anything else for an hour. Or I need to go to a yoga class. I need to take a retreat versus something that you can just do in your every day can make your day more mindfully productive. It's amazing when you see, and you know, we've talked about this a lot, Kate, the idea of like how just small moments can have these big impacts on the way you approach your day. And so even by just taking that moment in the morning and taking in the scent of those of these essential oils, not only is it immediately, you know, being inhaled and going to work with your brain, um, but it also gets absorbed and to work with your nervous system. But it's also just a moment of like, wow, this smells amazing. Let me just like take a moment and like smell, swipe and smile. Uh, So just even to the moment, you know, we encourage people to take a one minute ritual. So turning your deodorant routine that typically is mindless and you're racing through your morning to just take this stop. And I mean, most people are like, okay, see, I just like breathe it in like, ah, and it's just like this grounding that connects me to myself, connects me to my day. 
of course, we also give people little triggers to think about, like, we'll use that as a moment. We have stickers that actually fit on the bottle that encourage people to think like, you know, think about something you're grateful for, or uh, think about like one thing you want to accomplish today. And just those little steps can help you start shifting your time and taking, reclaiming your time because productivity hasn't worked. You know, we're just working harder and, you know, getting burnt out and not making more money and not having more leisure time. Um, but like, these little moments of being intentional about what you're focusing on can help you shift a little more energy to things that energize you and shift your energy away from things that drain you. Um, yeah, and I, I love this because you have four, there's four formulations at the moment, right? One is for more mindfulness, another is more focus, another is more calm, and another is more energy, right? So these mm-hmm. four, these four things. And I bought two of them. I bought mindful and focus. And I find myself now, I don't have just one of them out. I have both of them out and I'm choosing one or the other on purpose, which means that not only am I creating a ritual around my deodorant, around that moment in my day and recentering and grounding myself, I'm also choosing an intention and solidifying it by reading the words, smelling it, swiping, smiling, you know, the whole deal. But I usually do just, I mean, I do three deep breaths. It's not, it doesn't take me any time, but I do feel different in the morning when I take that moment. It is. And it's just exactly a lot of people are, we, that was surprising. We thought people would buy one, see if they liked it, buy another, but people are buying those multiples and really getting that sense of like, wait a second, what do I need today? Yeah. Like it's a check-in with yourself and a great way to start the day. I love it. And so my adult is building and you come up with this idea the world's most mindful office that's the secret that's the secret now you really want to listen (laughs) so the world's most mindful office was originally meant to be an outdoor pop-up correct yes the world's most mindful office first came up when we were well we had to delay our launch from may to june to july to august we ended up launching in october 2020 so we're about four months old. We're still a baby. With the launch, we wanted to do this outdoor pop-up experience. And COVID had started, but it was kind of getting into the summer. And we were like, this could be a way, you know, people can meet outside. People are so Zoom fatigued. I mean, you and I have talked the stats, this, that, and the other two thirds of people are feeling the burnout working from home. The whole living from, we're living, living from work. work. We're not, work, yeah. we're not, we're living from work. We're not working from home. And just you don't have those little spaces that you used to have, whether it was even just your routine, your your commute to work or walking through the park on a weekend or, you know, on your way home from work or whatever it might be. I mean, I have to say the real inspiration came from me looking at a picture where it it was a picture of a woman in a desk sitting outside with her feet up on the desk and it was gorgeous. I'm like, oh, it just made me be like, I want to be there. And so we thought, well, we could actually create that. And another inspiration was the, there's these public pianos that are played, have been placed throughout different cities. It's called Play Me Again, Sam. I know not Sam, just Play Me Again. As a public arts project, they put these pianos up and anybody can go up and sit down. I'm like, what if we put desks up outside and make them amazing? And then really thought about like, well, how would we create an experience that would give people this some tools and resources and awaken their senses and create this like mindful work experience that they can then take up. Well, first of all, leave feeling very refreshed and like, wow. And then take some of these resources home and be able to recreate that at home. So, and we had gotten park permits, this, that, and the other. I was working with this amazing artist, uh, Christina Libby, who does the COVID heart project, the floral heart project to honor COVID survivors, uh, you know, victims and the, those that we have lost with these hearts that she places throughout the city. So she was working me on creating just a really interesting plant-based experience, floral-based experience. All of a sudden the winter was creeping upon us and there was, and, you know, r- cases started rising because um, we really wanted, it was a very, you know, COVID friendly experience where you could come in, sign up by yourself, sit by yourself, spaced out outside. So Anyway, we had to put it on hold. And then I met you uh, through the luminary. And that was back, uh, you know, we had to cancel it probably about a week before we launched just because it was like, okay, we've gone too far into the fall. It's not going to work. And I had had some conversations with Kate Luzio from Luminary about maybe after we did the pop-up experience, we could do something, you know, 
or even, you know, whatever, let's do something at the um, luminary for a mindful office. So it finally came to fruition. She was like, wait, let's do this. It's springtime, stress awareness month. Now is the time to do it. And she introduced me to you and it just had a lot of energy behind it. And so the ability to be able to create an office in the luminary, which you can book by yourself and walk in and find these five ways that you can sort of awaken your senses, the five senses, the music, the taste, the sound, the the vision of, you know, the view of the flowers. And so, you know, the, the flowers, you know, so all of these different senses are getting awakened just to sort of ground you in that moment, similar to what we're talking about with just even taking it all in is a chance to sort of stop. You almost are forced to be present when you're sense you're paying attention to your senses. So it sort of starts with that. It gets you into starting off with setting an intention. It gives you breaks every 45 minutes to use some of Kate's wonderful tools, like doing an energy wash to keep your energy alive and then have that with you that you can take home and do all the time using working with a company called Cave Day. That's all about like, how do you like focus your attention? So you get more done. So then you have more time for leisure or doing, you know, what matters and other partners from the luminary to provide these breaks and really leave feeling refreshed, grateful, having learned a lot of things that you can take home with you and just creating this experience that can not only be happen within the luminary space, but can be taken home and shared with others. So I heard about this idea, Christina and I hopped on a Zoom one day because Kate, the founder of Luminary, which is a co-working space in New York City in the Nomad District, Kate suggested that Christina and I meet and she connected us and we hopped on a Zoom and she started talking and I just was sitting there like, I love all of these things. Yes, yes, yes to the world's most mindful office. Like everyone should be thinking about this. Even if you call your space that you're working in, even if the space you're working in is on your dining room table and you call it a mindful office space, just the change in the name will mm-hmm. make you sit at it differently. So when Christina was telling me all these plans that she has for the space and then asked if I had something to contribute, and I started just sort of, you know, shooting out a couple of ideas. Now it's all really going to happen. And I get to be a mini part of it. And I'm very, very, very excited about it. So for the entire month of April, if you are in New York City, you can rent the most, the world's most mindful office. I keep calling it the most mindful office in the world. And that was not the original title. I keep flipping it around. The world's most mindful office. (laughs) You can rent it for a half day or a full day. You come in, you have all the products in there, the beauty of the space. There's going to be floral design by Christina Libby, right? And we have some products and there's an acupressure routine that I'm going to set up for you. There's some videos on mindful moments. There's going to be a meditation from SoChill.io and it's going to be just this most wonderful space to be in. It it feels so good already and we haven't even created the whole thing yet. So if you're in New York City and you have the the time and space and ability, this is totally safe. It's going to be absolutely sanitized morning and night. And so don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. And it gives you the opportunity also if you've been sort of luminary curious because luminary is an incredible working space and you might have heard of it. If you've been luminary curious, this is also a great way to get into the space and and check it out. So one of the things that we started talking about and you've been mentioning throughout the, the course of the show today are these sort of mindful moments, like the moment with the deodorant, the moment with your breakfast. But we're talking about these really simple, really just really small moments. Can you can you dig into that a little bit more and talk to people about creating mindful moments? Within the context of the mindful office? Or yeah, just... yeah. Cool. Absolutely. So we really thought about, again, like these different, as we even just hearing about your morning, when you ask yourself, well, what do I need, energy or focus? Like, how do you think about, well, what do you need to get done and match that with what you might need in that moment? And in fact, there was, um, I guess it was Franklin, when I, Ben Franklin, sorry, Ben Franklin. So there are six points you need to touch in with yourself in the day. First thing when you wake up, last thing before you go to your bed, when you leave the house, 
and go to your work. Like, you know, then there was like, you know, during work, then when you're about to leave work and I, you know, so he had these six touch points. And of course he's been known for all of his like morning rituals and all that kind of stuff. But that aside, that really became the framework in a way for the session. So there is this six touch points throughout the program. And one is walking in and getting in touch with your senses. Two is getting started, sitting down, doing this intention exercise. And that will be developed with Cave Day, uh, the which is known as the world's most focus community. Um, <laughs> and they have a lot of techniques just to help people do what they call deep work so that you get more done and you have more time to do what matters to you outside of work. And then we'll also, we'll start off with I think it's the energy moment. So it is like this moment. So um, you'll have this break. It's your first break. So the first one was kicking off. The second one is your first break. And that will be all about making sure that you have, you know, I, let me take a step back for a second. I don't think that's the first one. That's I give them the energy last, I think. Let me start. I, well, and I think also, like we were saying about how you can choose the deodorants. I mean, people don't have to do them in that particular order. It's how <laughs> we're going to present them, but they can stop and say, well, what I re- need right yeah. now is mindfulness. What I need or, or focus, or I need calm or, you know, somebody gets a shitty email. Yeah. yeah. Then they can go to the less anxiety one, which is um, hint, hint. I'm making that one. <laughs> so, right. right. I mean, so, I mean did, and it really is about what do you need, but within yeah. the framework of three and a half, say hours, and yeah. to your point about COVID, we aren't going to book it twice a day, just so we can make sure it has like a full cleaning once a day, whether you book it for a half hour or a full day. But it's that idea of kicking off with, you know, shall it be focus, a moment of focus where you take in like a breath of peppermint oil and which is known to help you focus. And you do a little exercise about what do you need to achieve today? And even, you know, some of this, a little mini sprint exercise to get you there. And then you go back into a work session. And then the next thing you know, you have the um, anti-stress acupuncture points that Kate will be providing and sort of these eight pressure points that help you relax and stay calm. So you don't have to get anxious about the work in front of you or behind you. Um, You can be in that moment. And then that is where then we have the energy. So then, you know, as you get in, you might, instead of getting a cup of coffee, you can get your moment of energy with the key. I don't know how to say, you can say the the Qigong face wash. Qigong, it is Qigong. Okay. Mm -hmm. Qigong face wash. And then at the very end, there will be a little uh, mindful meditation from So Chill. Mm -hmm. So that's a great transition to go back out into the world and that's when also we will ask anybody who's visit, visit to have the chance to add an entry into this community gratitude journal. So again, just having a moment to give a little bit of gratitude is also something that sort of opens you up to things beyond yourself and just kind of like resets you and puts you in a more positive framework to handle, to go back out into the chaos of the world. But the point is that all of these are just, you know, simple, short exercises spaced throughout we have an order. You can do the order you want, but it all goes back to like, what do I need here? How do I take a fifth, you know, five minute break, 10 minute break, whatever it might be Associate it with the, we'll have a little stimulus for each of those breaks. There will be a scent associated that are one of the essential oils from the different mind alt variants. So one that's energizing, one that's calming, one that's focusing, and one that is about creating more awareness. And so you get done with your three and a half hours and you'll, you know, experienced a lot of different, you know, ways to just take these small moments that help you really get back into the present. And, you know, there's nothing like of all the people I've interviewed, we have a blog that's all about different people. And I think of it almost as mindfulness at work, because it's like, how do people use this, their mindfulness practice, whatever it is, you know, we're not telling you what your mindfulness practice should be. We're not even saying you should have to have one. We're just giving you inspiration. It's really about finding what works for you. Here's a variety of different things you can try. Something you might just love and decide to make that your, for me, like my breakfast. You know, what is it, what is going to be your ritual that you want to incorporate into your life? It's all about like providing inspiration and resources and tools and that you can make what works for you. Even though we talk about a lot about morning rituals, I'm very, I guess, 
anti like the type of like these are the morning rituals of successful yeah, people too. so follow the follow yeah, these too. rituals you know it's like no it's enjoy reading about them but half of them are unrealistic but take what you can and and do what you can and do what you love and I think the best part about this is, you know, the the space that we're creating at Luminary is going to be beyond beautiful. So it will add an entire sort of sensory experience of being surrounded by beauty. My hope is that when we post pictures of that online and talk about that online, that people will be encouraged to beautify their own spaces a little bit, even if, you know, they're working at their dining room tables. Like maybe there's a tablecloth that you could put down so that you're not hearing the keyboard or the mouse on the wood anymore, because that little bit of softness will be the thing that will help you. My favorite thing about this whole project is that everything that's being given as the little action steps, those mindful moments during the day are all things that can be done at home. These do not need, they're not, they don't need special things that these are average, available, findable, doable things. And I think that that's such a a gift to take the time to remind people that we can create a little bit more mindfulness in, in any moment that we choose. And I just, I just, I'm just obsessed yeah. And I think about that beauty, like, you know, I think that we've all been working in our own offices. So there'll be a like lovely experience if you choose to go to the luminary and, you know, book this office. And it's like all of the, everything you might need from every, they have printers, they have this, that, and the other, like you can learn all about like, all you know, here's this high tech, great office space, but it's just decked out and everything to create an experience that takes you away, but that you can also take away from to create at your own home. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So everybody, the secret is officially out. In two weeks time, you will be able, if you are in New York City, you will be able to book yourself for a day, whether you use it for four hours or eight, up to you, but you'll be able to book yourself a day in the world's most mindful office created by Christina Valletta of MindAlt, supplemented (laughs) supplemented by yours truly and some other wonderful Luminary members, um, So Chill and the people at Cave Day and Kate Luzzi of, of Luminary itself. And we are so excited to invite you there. I am slightly tempted to book all the days for myself, (laughs) (laughs) but I promise to not do that. Well, the only other yeah. thing is that during the month of April, there oh, will right. be some additional programming to give you other ways to access the ideas behind the Mindful Office. There'll be a session on mindful leadership where we talk to from a different couple of different perspectives from the management perspective. You know, we have a woman, uh, Susan Justice from Betterment, who's going to come speak with us, as well as Erica Keswin, who wrote a book about workplace rituals and how you can uh, create magic, create magic with your workplace rituals. And uh, actually the founder of uh, the co-founder of Cave Cave Day is going to join us as well to talk about sort of the tools and, and her philosophy behind these deep work sessions. And then I am super excited and going to be right there for a workshop that Kate is going to be giving on mindfulness at work as well. And just Again, like more tools and and um, I can't wait to join in on that lunchtime session to really be inspired to think about other ways I can build it into my life. Also, in addition to that, that just reminded me that we are still in the month of March and for Women's History Month for the month of March, all of Luminary's programming is free to the public, free to women, I should say. Um, so if you want to check out, I'm, I'm a digital member at Luminary, which means that I could go pop in the office for X amount of hours uh, during the month. So I can't go in there. I can go in there every day. I just have to pay extra. <laughs> but I am a digital member at Luminary because I don't need a co-working space in the city on a very regular basis. But it is worth a digital membership because they have so much to offer online. And this is a way for you to start checking out the things that that they do have to offer. Christine and I are going to be talking about the mindful office again at the end of this month through Luminary's platform. And then again, so through throughout all of April, 
we will be doing more programming around mindfulness in the office and, and all of that, which is super exciting. And if you book the room, you get put in a little raffle and there's going to be a whole basket full of mindful focused goodies that you want to get your hands on, but you can only get your hands on it if you book yourself into the world's most mindful office. So we hope that encourages people to come in and use the space and get really excited about it. Um, yeah, I think that sums it up. Do we have anything else? I think that's it. Can you believe it's happening? I'm very excited. Me yes. too. And uh, I think that it's something that there'll be other ways to activate um, as well. So but I'm mostly excited that it's such a great, everybody involved is a great partner. Everybody has the same mission and that it's something that's not just, that's accessible to everyone yeah. because they all are things that we can do ourselves. So in the spirit of accessibility, the tips that I am leaving at Luminary, you will also be able to download from the show notes. They will be attached to this episode. So you in case you want a couple of tips and you do not live in New York City or you are not going to book the, the Mindful Office, you will still have access to some of these things. I will also link to Mind Alt and the other contributors that were mentioned in today's show. And so you can sort of work it into your world just because you're inspired about what we're talking about. Because one of the things that I did actually, since we talked that day, the first day that we spoke, Christina mentioned that there was a computer mat like for underneath your laptop that was made out of lavender, right? You mentioned that. And mm -hmm. I thought that was just the coolest thing. And so I did not get one that was made out of lavender, but I did get one that is lavender color. Oh, you can't see it. I did get one that is lavender colored. And now the reason that I said that earlier about like feeling the, the sound of the mouse on the wood and all of that is because I now have this desk mat and it has up leveled my deskness by about <laughs> 300%. And it cost me $19.99 on Amazon. So I will also throw a link up to the desk mat that I recently bought because these are small little things, especially if you're working at like a dining room table. If you can put your desk mat and put your computer on it in the beginning of the day and then shut your computer down and take your desk mat away at the end, this will help you create a separation between your work day and your home day when you're kind of always in your home, like we were mentioning before. So this might be one of the ways that you use to create a mini ritual to create some more separation between those spaces. So this is the kind of stuff that we're going to be talking about. So I'll be sharing all of this in the show notes. There will be downloads. There will be all sorts of goodies. So get ready. And yes, Christina, thank you so much for being here, thank sharing you. your ideas, thank your you inspiration. Thank you for being such a great partner and uh giving me a lot more ideas and things that I can do to make sure my, I am breathing too. <laughs> <laughs> we have to take care of each other on that front. Yes. All right, fried fans, that wraps us up for today. We will talk to you next week.